Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Hire Self Ensemble. I am your host, Apollonia Williams. I go by the name Apple for short. This topic is brought to you by none other than the Holy Spirit. Literally, revelatory teaching moments shared here to help you assemble the pieces of your higher self on which the Lord thy God sees in all of us. My topic for you all today is going to be coming from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. And pretty much this scripture explains what a pure heart is and the purpose of having one. Amen. In summary, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 says, in full assurance of faith and a true heart, you draw near to God. Because your heart has been sprinkled from an evil conscience, which washes your body with pure water. According to this scripture, in order to draw nearer to God, we must be in full assurance of faith and have a true heart. I expressed what full assurance of faith looks like in the last two videos titled Faith is knowledge part one and part two now in this video we get a bit closer to god by understanding what it truly means to have a true heart according to the scripture a true heart is a heart that has been sprinkled from an evil conscience to better understand this we first have to ask ourselves how does a heart become sprinkled from an evil conscience. And we find the answer in Psalms 51 and 10. In summary, Psalms 51 and 10 says, to put a new and faithful spirit within me, create in me a pure heart. Many of us have used this scripture as a prayer point in our lives. And when I say many, I am including me as well. However, I don't think we fully understood the magnitude of what we were saying. I know I didn't, at least until now. So let's look at the word pure. Pure in Hebrew is ta'or. And it means clean, morally and ethically. In Greek, the word pure is katharos, which means cleanse by pruning and so fitted to bear fruit, purified by fire in an ethical sense, free from corrupt desire, free from sin and guilt, free from every admixture of what is false in order to become genuine and sincere, unstained from the guilt of blame with anything. Saints, when we asked God to create in us a pure heart, we were asking him to cleanse us morally. We were asking him to clean us ethically. And in the ethical sense, we were asking him to free us from a corrupt desire and also to free us from every admixture of what is false in order to become genuine and sincere. This, sons and daughters of God, is our heart being sprinkled from an evil conscience. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Now, this last line, which says, washes your body with pure water, is literally self-explanatory. Only if you paid attention in biology class and the lessons learned about the body still sticks with you. Now, I am a visual learner, which is why you see slides and not my face. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And also, the enemy can't take it away like it is written in Mark chapter 4. The purity of our heart washes our body with pure water. That's basically what that last line is saying. And this statement is scientifically true because the heart is responsible for pumping blood throughout our whole entire body.
When Jesus died on the cross, the scripture says, one of the soldiers pierced his side and his blood flowed out like water. Given the fact that Jesus was innocent when he died, would make that blood shed pure water. Through this representation, we have to now ponder and consider our life before Jesus died on the cross, before our heart was wicked. For the scripture, Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So the blood that pumped through our body was toxic in so many words, and it toxicated our heart, our mind, our body, and our soul. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he enters into our heart and fills us with his innocence, purifying us, thus creating a spiritual blood transfusion within us, which washes our body clean. Sons and daughters of God, we have to allow the Lord to further occupy every part of our heart to include surrenderance of our mind, our emotions, and our will. To make straight the path for the Lord, we have to let the Holy Spirit have its way. To prepare the way of the Lord is similar to a street being paved, and the lines within the street represents the pathways. Pathways which remind me of the many blood vessels that our body has to keep blood flowing to and from our heart and lungs. According to VeryWellHealth.com, blood flow involves our lungs, heart chambers, valves, and blood vessels. Your heart muscles squeeze and release to push blood through the two chambers on the right side of your heart and out to the lungs where it gathers oxygen. Now this oxygen, I like to call in the spirit, the Ruach Kakegesh, the Holy Spirit. And a vein then carries this oxygen rich blood into the left side of the heart. These two chambers on the left thrust the blood into are arteries that carry blood and oxygen to the whole body. Galatians 5 and 24 and Colossians 3 and 5, the ESV version, together reads, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires, therefore putting to death what is earthly, sexually immortality, impurity, evil desires, covetedness, and idolatry. First Timothy chapter one, verse five says, out of a pure heart is a good conscience, faith unfeigned in charity. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 22 says, those that call on the Lord out of a pure heart Flee from youthful lust and follow after righteousness, faith, charity, and peace. So, saints, let us draw nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to God in full assurance of faith and a true heart. Because according to Ephesians 3 and 12, in faithfulness and through the union we have in Christ, we have total access to God and his full assurance. Amen. So again, my name is Apollonia Williams. I go by Apple for short. Thank you so much in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel and love and light. Stay in tune. God bless.